Hello everybody, I'm Rusty. I want to welcome you to Island Breeze Tropicals. Oh baby, please don't go. Today we're going to be talking about what happens to a bromeliad after it has gone into flower. So as usual, I try to get the horticultural nomenclature out of the way so that we can have some fun. But this is an important term and it's one you really should know about a lot of bromeliads and it's called being monocarpic. Now monocarpic simply means pretty much one life. And what that means is that this plant with this inflorescence that you see, by the way, this is a type of nudicalis. There you go, now I got her in the frame. So monocarpic means one life. Now what that means is that this plant after it has finished the flowering sequence is going to die. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it's true. Any bromeliad that has an inflorescence that arises from the center of the plant down in the tank is going to be monocarpic. And what that means is that after this flowering sequence has finished, then it will produce pups like you see here. Those are the vegetative offsets. See, I think that's got three of them. But then, at some point, the adult plant right here is going to decline and it's going to die. Now, the inflorescence does not have to rise above the cup for that to happen. This is a Neoregilia gill. And remember we talked about neos before, that they only have an inflorescence that stays down in the cup. But it is, after all, in the center of the plant and the same thing is going to happen. So not all bromeliads will do that. Not all bromeliads are monocarpic. But those are the bromeliads that get an inflorescence that does not come from the center of the plant. This is called a dikia. That is the genus or the grouping that this plant is part of. And it's a little teeny tiny inflow as you can see. So this plant will not die just because it sends out an inflorescence. But really the vast majority of the genera in bromeliads, they are monocarpic. So why does this happen? Well, it's thought that the plant is spending all of its energy to reproduce. And after it does that, it has no more energy left. And then the center of the plant, or the original plant, you can call it the mother plant if you want, has used up all of its energy and starts to die. Now here's what happens. When any plant comes into a flower sequence like this, it really does stop part of its active growth cycle. And what it does is it takes a lot of its energy and it tries to put it into reproduction. In every plant, reproduction is probably one of the larger energy expenditures that you can see that the plant has to put up with. And after this energy expenditure, not just the inflow, but take a look at the pups, after making those, it has used all of its energy and it's going to decline and die. But it all is not lost. Remember that you do get new plants. This is an ichmia called Gamma Sapala. And look at this clump. This clump started out with one plant. It's probably about a year and a half to two years old. Take a look at all of the inflows on there. And you will always get pups. So you're not going to lose a plant so much as you're going to gain other ones. So you've heard me say it before. Remember, saying bromeliad is like saying tree. Just like there are lots of different kinds of trees, there are lots of different kinds of bromeliads. Now, some bromeliads pup an awful lot. Again, this is Gamma Sapala. And some pup I don't know, this has got three. I'd say that's not too paltry. What do you think? And there are some I've seen that only produce one pup. 
So it's essentially the same process for any bromeliad that has an inflorescence that arises or sits down in the center of the cup. Now this is Olin's Brazil. You can see that it has had an inflorescence and you can also see that it is putting out vegetative offsets. Yep, that's we call them pups. And it's essentially the same process. It doesn't matter whether the pups come out on stolons or they're closely oppressed to the adult. As soon as it produces the amount of pups that genetically it says it can do, then this adult right here is going to decline and die. So this illustrates when you have a large clump, what happens, and you can see that we've got decline starting at a couple of those rosettes. Now I had already cut the inflows on them, but this is about what you're going to see. So what will happen to your bromeliad is that one leaf will start to go and then another and then another. Now when they start to die because they have gone through the flowering and the pumping sequence, it's not overnight. There are some bromeliads that take well over six months to actually decline and die. Some a couple of months, again, they're all different, but this is what you will see. And this clump right here, if you take a look, you can see the decline starting on some of those. Now I've clumped, now I have taken the inflow off of them a long time ago, but these plants are ready to go. And they start one leaf at a time, and then it's two, and then it's three, and then you'll know when to cut it out of there and it's okay. Sometimes if you don't get to it, all you really have to do is go and grab and take the dead part out and it's good as new. And the pups will take over from the declining adult. So if you start going, oh baby, please don't go. There's another bromeliad waiting in the wings for you. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed learning about bromeliads and what happens after they come into flower. See, it's not so bad. You still got more plants. So no matter where you are, I hope your sun is shining. I hope you have an island breeze blowing. You need to keep growing. Have some fun. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.